In 2016, it was estimated that UK supermarkets throw away over 100,000 tonnes of perfectly good food each year. And to tackle that, at the end of 2017, Tesco announced they'd agreed a deal to donate all the unsold food from its stores to charity. Uh, Tesco's food collection is something that Tesco's launched last year. Uh, it's something where we would scan the food through at the end of the night, the stuff that's going out of date. Uh, what we would do it is uh, donate it to the local charities and young schools, uh, which then they would pick up the next day. So where does all that food go? Tesco's let Food Cloud, because we work with um, Fairshare, who use a system called Food Cloud, um, and the supermarkets let Fairshare know if they've got any food for that night. They then text me, say, yes, we've got food available at all the different stores, do we want it? And I text back and say, yes, please. Um, so then we just go and collect the van, um, we take it to uh, the stores, um, pick up whatever they've got. Uh, if we're coming back here to King's, um, we just come back, sort it, make sure that there's all the food is good quality, nothing past its use by date. We do try to sort it into like veg, fruit, bread, so that when the chefs come in, and the team come in, they don't have to spend too long to sort it out. The food cycle is basically, it's a charity where we get donated food from various supermarkets and we cook it up into a meal and we can feed anything up to 50 people while we're doing it. Most of it is vegetarian, but they do normally do a soup and they do a main course and they do a dessert. Uh, my name's Graham Coburn. Uh, I'm the kitchen health bleeder, um, which is chef, if yeah. you like. We officially start about four o'clock for the preparation to deliver a meal starting at six, or the, the clients come through the door at six. Uh, I usually get here about quarter to four, so I can have a lay out all the fruit and veg, uh, so we can see the content that's been delivered. Then it's a case of getting the uh, peeling, chopping, the vegetable preparation done as quickly as possible. A favourite of ours and one that I do is the potato wedges. So we just use clean potatoes, we don't bother peeling them. Um, and we, we slice them into wedges and then coat them with oil and a little bit of um, spice, spicy, spicy potato wedges, that's a favourite. Uh, we quite often do a stir fry vegetable with green veg. We did one of those today. Um, I come early, so I go in the prayer room, or I try to, which we don't, I don't always get in there. And then we, I do a bit of everything, don't I? I lay the tables, I make the tables look pretty. I cut the veg, and from there on, and serve, so, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll have them as a go at everything, really. Yeah. I like to make everything look a little bit prettier. I, to be honest, I did it because I lost my son, and so I struggled with being a little bit angry with the world, sort of thing, so I thought if I'd come and I'd volunteer that maybe I'd, you know, and it works, because there's nice people who appreciate and everyone comes together, so that is the reason why. Um, oh. I mean, he was, he was out partying, he was given something, yeah, he was oh. 20, yeah. So it's took years, it's only just been recently I found out what it's about, so it's took three and a half years, you yeah. know. It's quite hard, yeah, so that's why I've come here to seek a bit of, and it works, they're quite, you know, because I'm only a lot, and I've got other children. So, and I find it's quite hard to keep me in my I so make sure I do it, don't know. But I've got a lot better, you know. I was actually made redundant from work last year, and I was tearing my hair out, I didn't have anything to do, and I was, went to the doctors one day, and as I walk, was walking home, I walked past the church, and the church doors was open, and I thought, there's got to be something useful that I can do somewhere, and I went in and asked. I enjoy doing that. I enjoy the people. Um, it's nice. It gives you a nice feeling to know that you've helped somebody. Because some of the people we 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 feed out there are like elderly people that are lonely, um, families with young children. There's homeless people. There's recovering drug addicts and alcoholics. It's just a, 
total mixed bag. And I've learnt a lot of things. One thing I have learnt is not to be so wasteful with food. Because all of us, I think, go through a phase where you look at something, you see it's out of date, you think, can't use that. I used to be one of the world's worst. I'd go through my fridge and things, and that's out of date, bin it, that's out of date, bin it. But you can tell with vegetables and things. Now, I would never think to put the things together that they put together. You know, you see it and you think, no, that's not going to work. But beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, all right, there's no meat, but I can cope with that, you know. And it, it is beautiful, it's a blessing, it really is lovely. We used to work with the homeless quite a lot. Um, we were going out feeding them, we joined a group um, that was all voluntary, you know, don't get paid for it, nothing like that. Um, and we heard about King's Church, it was not only for homeless, but for other people to socialise, mix with everybody. No matter where you're from, what you do, whether you've got a home, whether you haven't got a home. And since we've been coming here, um, Debbie, who's now my key worker who works here, has got us with so many friends. We've made so many friends. They're all such a lovely bunch here. They can't do enough for you. It is such a lovely place. Peter John Whitaker, Pete, Pete Dre there, everybody calls, everybody calls me Pete Dre. Food is wonderful. I'm a vegetarian anyway. Vegetarian, look. Um, been vegetarian for over 40 years, but everything's vegetarian here anyway, so I don't have to worry about a thing, and it's always yummy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's nice to meet, mix with people as well. Um, probably gathered I'm a, a funny guy, I'm a troublemaker, or I'm yeah. daft, everybody calls me. I love it. Yeah. Probably from another soup bank. Yeah. I think somebody gave me a, a card to say this is running. And I thought I'd try it out what right while they are on top, you know, at the time. And never look back. Sarah Metis and his team leader at Make. Uh, we contacted Gail uh, about something completely different and we chatted and we decided that we could probably take over the Pompey Preserves for her and that's pretty much where we've gone from there. Um, Gail um, or her colleagues will drop off the vegetables or fruit on a Thursday evening and then from there what we do on a Friday is we get our guys with learning disabilities to have a think about what they can make with them. They have a think we chat about it and decide how we'd make it and then from there on we chop, we peel, we boil um, all the ingredients that we need, um, adding sugar and vinegar and then um, we jar them in sterilised jars. They then get cooled down and Gail produces labels for us which we then get our guys to stick on and little tops and then they head off back to, to Tesco or they stay in the shop and we sell them, sell them from here. Yeah, it went really well. It was great. It's always really good fun um, because, you, you know, you set up your table um, with all the preserves and obviously we've got some banners, some literature about food cycle, about food waste, about feeding communities and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it engages people. It absolutely engages people. People, they love it. It's got a fantastic backstory. And the reason it's popular and the reason it's been successful is because it's got a really good backstory. And I think in anything like that, if you've got a great backstory, you can, it's, it's an easier sell, if you like. So, um, yeah. Mm. Um, the money we get from it all goes back into food cycle. I mean, obviously, running food cycle costs money. So whilst we get food um, donated, we still need stuff like store cupboard staples, like a lot of it. You know, oil, uh, butter. We don't get um, we don't get donated much. Cheese, particularly, is expensive. Coffee, teas, all that sort of stuff, and all you know, flour, all the less glamorous things. So it, it costs quite a lot of money to keep it running. Plus, we have a van that we have to keep on the road, um, etc., etc. So you know, it's, it's part of our fundraising, if you like. We've this year we've teamed up with Make at Oldingbourne Trust. Um, to uh, on the Pompey Preserve, so they're now actually make it, physically making it in their kitchens. So we're actually splitting the profits between us. Um, and when we go and sell and offer the Pompey Preserves, then we'll go together as a joint charity uh, initiative.
which is great. It's good for them, as you know, because they support adults with learning difficulties. It's good for us because we deal with building, nourishing communities and tackling food waste. And then we have a fantastic product that kind of joint brings us together.